I'd like to welcome you all to the live instructional webinar designed to support the school annual yearbook program. Today we'll be focusing on the functions that relating to building activity or candid page. Specifically, we will be reviewing pages, bleeds, and margins, the toolbar, design functions, templates, click and go templates, custom templates, and themes. This webinar will be approximately 45 minutes, so let's get started. All right, so my screen is uh, magnified here just to show you the first one. We're going to talk about bleeds and margins. So the concept of the bleed right here is you can see where this red square is. It's in the gray area right here. This gray area, this right here says, uh, caution all bleed elements must extend one pica from the red line. So that's what this is. And the reason for this is so that when we go to cut this, the last thing we want, and this will be a little um, exaggerated here, the last thing we want is for something to be right here. And then you're going to see that little white line at the very top. So we go to cut this. The last thing we want is that little white line all the way there. So that's why we go past this little red line. So that way, this edge right here is blue or red or whatever the background is. So that's why we have this little gray zone. This is the next thing we're going to talk about is. Uh, the gray zone indicates where the bleed is. This is where the coloring or your background, this is where it goes over. Uh, this is also where the trim line is as well. So as we go to trim the books and everything and all the trimming, there are pluses and minuses. It could be the way the paper was loaded. It could be the sharpness of the blade, the operator, the paper itself. So there's always plus and minuses. That's why we have uh, this gray area. That's why we suggest that any background goes into this gray area. Next, we're going to talk about the blue line. And the blue line, and you can see in this red area right here, is sitting right there in the middle of the page. This blue square is sitting inside of the blue line. What this is, is this is the display area or area that all your images, your uh, portraits are going to sit in. Um, basically, this is the safe area. So if I put an image, and let me come up to my image here, and the images I'm going to use here for the next uh, thing. Here we go. So if I put an image right here, it is safe. It's going to print. Everything in that image is going to be visible. So that's what this little area is right here. If I could put up in a corner and I know everything in this area is going to print. Now the red trim line, if we go back to zoomed in. Now if we put an image, say right up here or an image right up here. Let's get some different images so we can see. So here we have a few images and we have it outside of the blue box. Now, the reason why you may not want your images outside this blue box is we remember when we talked about the bleed line or the cut line as well and the plus and minus. So here we have a cut line right here. And you can probably already see what the issue is going to be. You have one picture where the top of the head is going to be cut off. One picture where you're still fine. You're still all right. Another picture where a lot more of the top of the person's head is going to be um, not visible in the book. Now, with the plus and minus, you may have maybe this part right here or maybe just this part right here. Uh, that's visible. So you can kind of see you have um, different parts of the picture that might be removed. 
And if you have, uh, some of you may have dealt with parents who may be angry at the fact that their child, most of their child's image is missing. Uh, another way to look at it to see if how much of the image is missing. I'm going to put this over here for. Is we're going to come over here and we're going to look at it. This dotted black and white line all the way right here. That is the cut line. So you can see what of the image is being cut off. Here you can see this picture in the corner. You have some of the head over here. Some of this area right here on the. Um, sorry. Oh, there it is. So some of this area right here. This area right here will be a part of the uh, spine or be glued. So you'll be missing some of that area. Then if you come down here, here you will see some of this area will be part of the spine. So you'll miss that area and you'll miss some of this. So this is why we tell everyone to be careful about where you place your images. And this is why we uh, show you what it looks like when you put an image outside that blue area. All right, so next we're gonna talk about some designer basics, some of the toolbar and tab uh, basics. So real quick, we're going to talk about the toolbar right here. Uh, first one you have is file. Under file, you have uh, some of the essential items you'll need, like is save. So anytime you make a change, you'll see that the save option appears right here. You'll also see that the save icon right here, the little three and a half floppy. Uh, other things you will see is save as a template. So if we click on here, we can see that it's asking for a name. So we can name this template anything we want, whether it is fifth grade can uh, candidates, uh, fifth grade baby pictures, it could be first day of school, uh, staff photos, whatever you want it to be. We have the option of saving just the left side, the right side, or both sides once we do Excuse me. Once we do that, we click save and it will go to the tab that we will, uh, I'll explain where it goes and how to find it here in a minute. You can also save this as a click and go. Uh, if this is a practice page or a page that you want to uh, kind of experiment with different layouts or different ways of doing stuff, you can click save it as a practice page or click on a new practice page. You can also view this page as a PDF right here. You also download this page as a PNG or as a, a JPEG. Next, we have the edit. So first one is the undo and the undo and redo is right here as well. So if you can click undo, it moves the image right back. You have your, your cut and your paste. You have your copy and then you can paste again. So there's that. Also here on the other side right here, if you have the photo clicked, you can also hit this button right here. It's called duplicate and you can duplicate your image. So next here you have change background and we'll talk about the background here. You can also do check your spelling. And under view, you can hide your rulers, hide your margins. Uh, I suggest keeping them out. Here you got uh, grid lines. And the grid lines are easy to find. And here you have this ruler right here. If you click and hold on the ruler, you can drag a grid line down. You put it right there. You can come over here to the left. Click and hold on here. Drag one over. And from there, you can always move your photo right to where you need it and it will help you line up your images okay. 
Next, you have Arrange. Here you can lock or unlock. So if you have a photo clicked, you can lock it. And here you will see a red lock. So it will not allow you to move that image. I can move everything around it, but it won't let me move this. If for any reason you need to unlock it, you can either click this little padlock right here and unlock it, or you can come over here, lock all, come back up to arrange and unlock it. Also under arrange, you have group. So we can select these, come over here and we can group these. You can also arrange, you can bring to front, bring to back. And so what that would mean is if you have an image, say right here, you have another image right here, with this one selected, you can come up to arrange, go down to arrange again and bring to front, and it brings this image to the front. We also have transform, so you can rotate it to the left, or you can grab right here, this little, yellow box and you can grab this and you can just rotate the image any way that you want right there. So if you just want just a slight slight turn right there, you can do that way. Also you have mirror. You can mirror horizontally and it will mirror everything over to here. Next, we're going to talk about the tabs. Um, also, to finish up here, you also have your spell check, your printer preview, and of course, your save. You also have your page number, so you can always click down here, go to whatever page you want, and you have your zoom. So if you want to look at something a little closer, you can zoom in and zoom out. Now, next, we're going to come over here. We're going to talk about these tabs right here. The first tab is pages. So for any reason that you need to go to another page, um, you don't have to go back to plan the page ladder, then to your next page. You can simply click on page right here, scroll down to what page you need to be on and click on it. Um, and then it will take you to your page right there. One nice feature uh, for this year is if you hover over it, If you hover over it, you will see you get a preview of that page. So that is one nice feature for this year. Next is designs. Now, while we're here, let's talk about this uh, real quick. We'll click this down arrow and you'll see the first one says custom. So we click this custom one. Here's where you're going to see your my click and go, my templates. This is where you will find this year's templates. So if this is a design that you want to have forward over to next year, please save it as a template so that when we sync, go in and sync with last year, we could push your templates over to the next year. But here's where you will find this year's templates. These are the ones that you saved this year. Next is the any practice page that you may have made. Those will be right here. And to move those practice pages onto the, the current page that you're on, all you have to do is click and hold, bring over here, let go, and there's your practice page. Then you can click continue working on whatever you're working on. Or if you want to try something, or if you have an idea and you want to try it, you can try it with a practice page. Okay, next you have My 2022 Templates or My 2023 or My 2024, whatever the previous year was. This is where any templates that you save this year, next year, these are where the, this is where there will be. Or if you had any templates from last year's book, this is where there will be for this year. And same thing, you can click and hold, drag those over, let them go, and you can start put these templates anywhere you need them. You also have last year's click and go as well.
Now next we're going to talk about templates right here. So some of you may want to use templates um, So here we have different styles. We have candids, we have clubs and organizations, uh, gallery, sports. And so with some of these, like candids are just simple uh, pages to fo put photos up and all that. You can drag and drop. Now you may get this pop up right here. It says, do you want to retain the existing content? This is any content that is on there, and we're going to talk more about this when we get to uh, backgrounds. But we want to click yes. Then from here, if you don't like the color of the teal, you can simply click on this, come up this little toolbar that opens up. We'll show that again. If you click on this teal, we'll get this toolbar that opens up. So we can come over here, click down, and we can select. Uh, the first thing you'll see is used on page. These are colors that are currently used on a page. So if I click on here and say that I click this button right here, we go back to this teal, and now you will see that the color is now added right here that I just put on there. Um, this is very helpful if you get done de designing one side of the page and you, you want to use those colors on the other side, and now you don't have to hunt for those colors. You don't have to write anything down. They're right here on used on page. So you can also go down and look for different coloring. If you see a blue that you like or whatever color, I'm gonna use blue because that's my favorite one. So you can change this. You can also change, click on this font right here. Again, another toolbar opens up. This one looks slightly different. This is for fonts. And so you don't say so you don't want to like this font. You can go into your selected fonts, choose the one you want. And here we can change the font. You can change the font size. You can even change the font color to one of the colors that are currently used on the screen. Um, you can also transform to all uppercase. Uh, proper capitalization. Uh, you could do change line spacing. Uh, align it to the to the center, to one side or the other. All it's all up to you. Next, we have images. Here is where the images uh, that you upload will be uh, under activity. Here you will see different files that are created, and these will have whatever images that you put on these files. Um, so like for field trips, here we go. We have the, the different field trips during the school year that you could put photos in. Next is art. Here we'll have the image frame. So if you want to create your own uh, candid photos, if you want to completely get rid of these, and sit and create your own. Uh, you can freely do so. Um, here we also have clip art. Now the clip art here, you can use the, you can sort by category. So whatever category you wanna use, you can use the ones in, in cover. You can use the ones in theme if your school has a theme for the school year. And you can use the one by type. They are all there for you to use. Do not feel that I that's not my cover, so I can't use those. No, you can use them. You can use all of the clip art. Um, feel free to sit there and scroll through them. Find one you like, put it up there, and, and keep going, keep designing, and Next is text. So here you will see that uh, for your book, you may have text already ready to go right here. Uh, if you don't, simply click and add a style right here. So new style, select a text that you want, then you can save it. And 
that. Let me reload here. All right, so there's our new text that we can drag and drop it over here. Uh, we could change the size of the text. And there we go. If you're, if you see that red X, it just means that the text is uh, larger than the box that it's in. So there we go. We can always just drag and drop a text box over here. Flowing, uh, uh, most of you will be familiar with the flow tab. Uh, we talked about flowing images in the last webinar. Next is history. And we're gonna jump down and talk about history here real quick. History allows you to see what has been on the page either today, yesterday, this week, last week. So the second you hit save, you will see today's and this week. Now tomorrow we'll see what we did yesterday. This older version right here, this retains all of the saves that you have done since the beginning of the page. So at any time that you are working on a book and you want to bring something back, but you're not seeing it, you can come down here to older version and uh, pull it from, from, from a previous one and pull it back up. Now, one nice thing is you can actually see a history. So if you want to see a history of what has been done on that page, it will actually let you know what's been done and by who. So if you have a staff member, you can see what staff member is doing what. Another nice feature is you can actually go to different pages and actually bring over different pages history onto the current page. So that's go. Now we're going to move on to the next page. Okay. So we talked about uh, placing templates and how you can choose one, choose the other. And so we have our templates right here. Um, you can also save these templates. So if you like what you did here, um, whether it's the different color, uh, simply just changing different colors or stuff like that. If you like what you see here and you wanna use this template next year, we can come over to files and we can save as a template. Here we can give this template a name. We can call it um, fifth grade field trip and we want to save both pages. We can hit save right here. Then that way next year, so here it is in our current one. This way when we move our uh, templates over to next year, not only is it named as what it is, it'll be right here. Next we have click and go templates. Now, some of these are uh, just a little different. Uh, like here, we have a nice little image block. So we can type up something right here, um, like an event or something like that. Uh, we can do another event right here. You can almost set up like a little, maybe a little timeline. Do something like this. Here we go. So you can set something up like this. Nice, nice little timeline. You could put like what happened here, um, maybe this assembly, 
or this event happened here or this event for this teacher put uh come up over here to art and we'll put little little line you know little images right here So here we go. And then to save this as a click and go, we come up to file and then you can click as a save and go right here, give it a name real quick. There we go. And under custom, you'll have your save and go, uh, your click and go right here. Um, this you can set up differently. Uh, so to customize this, uh, click and go right here. You'll see this little yellow dot all the way around. What that is, is it's grouped. So to ungroup it, you simply click on it. Come down to this toolbar all the way at the end. You're going to click on ungroup. Now you're going to see a yellow line all around everything. So grouped ungrouped once it's ungrouped then you can change things around um, so say you want to add so you want to add a uh, background to each one of those so we can grab that change that to a background remember on in a range right here we're going to send backwards so we're gonna send it back. Then selecting all these again, we can group it again. Come up to file, click as a save and go. We can override it. So if you change, if you change it, you can you can save it the first time. You're like, nah, I want to change something else, and you can always rename it the same. Then again, under designs, here's our click and go. Yeah, very I will go. So it's a nice way of creating a small section and then designing it yourself. Take that small group, save it as a click and go. So all you have to do is just bring it out over here and then you have multiple copies of that nice small design. Now, for some of you that may have uh, custom themes and uh, custom backgrounds and all that, so some of the custom themes uh, can be found uh, right here in clip art by themes. If you click on it, you will see the backgrounds, clip art, everything that you need right here. Now, if you don't want to go here, and you want this in your images, you can come to create image library. Yes, we don't mind leaving. We can come down to clip art by theme. We go to uh, like this one that we were at, Adventure Awaits, and we can click on the first one holding the shift key, click on the last one, and then you can download these images, unfortunately, you cannot um, transfer these images or you have to download them. Uh, come over to activity here under activity. You can create uh, background icons. And then by clicking the backgrounds and icons, you can upload those images up to here and then you can have them for whatever you need them for. Okay. Next, we're going to, next we're gonna talk about backgrounds. Now backgrounds, you can choose many different uh, styles of your backgrounds. One you can choose is a solid color background, like here on the left. 
or you can choose an image like the one on the left while they're on the right. To do this, you can do it, one, you can right click and you'll see change background right here. Here, you can come up to file, uh, sorry, edit, change background, and you'll get the same pop-up right here. Now, the left page is clicked right here. You will see the background color. So we can actually select a solid color if you want. To get rid of this background, you can remove background. And then you can come up to choose an image. Now here is where you can go to like your backgrounds and icons. If you uploaded those themes, you can select them right here. If not, you can always come down to clip art by theme. Adventure awaits if that's the one you have. For, I'm just choosing it for this webinar. And here you can scroll down to find which background you want to pick. And if you get a red box around it, if you see this red box right here, that means you cannot select it as a background. So yes, even these clip arts, you can click on, uh, click on a clip art and you can put a clip art as a background. You can come back and you can select this one. Let me reset my view here. There we go. All right, because I just noticed there was a there was a button missing. So if we select this one, you will see this select button in teal pop up. So we can select that, and then it will appear right here. Some of these, um, like I just had before, some of these have a left and right image. Uh, or left and right wallpaper so that that way it kind of spread across the two pages. But the backgrounds from different uh, themes, different covers are free to use. You can use any one of them. Okay, so next we're going to talk about we're going to talk about formatting. So some of the things you can do, you can start getting really creative here, just like this. Um, here's one where we add a bit of a neon sign around the image. And so some of the things you can do when you bring a image block in is you can add a uh, stroke line around it or border and you can make that border as you know as, as thick as you want or you can make it a little smaller you can also change the color of that border so if you want a oh, that's a little here we go so if you want something like this, and it would probably help if we bump that up a little bit. So you can add a border. You can also come over here to this little like magic wand and you can round the corners on it. So you can do that. Then when you put an image in it, There we go. If you see a red, that means that the image frame is larger than the actual image, and it will not let you do that. It, the program is designed to keep you from um, putting an image in there that will become distorted or blurry. So it's more to protect the image and to make sure that you get a quality image in there. So with this, 
image right here. We also have different uh, options that come up once we have this image. Here we can go to uh, format. We can, like I said, around the corners, we can mess with the transparency, uh, the tint. Here we can add a drop shadow. We can change the distance. Um, let's do that. Here we can change the degree. Here we'll change the distance a little bit here. And you can see with how the shadow goes around the photo. So we can all depends on how we want the, which direction we want the shadow to go to. We could change to a, um, a dark shadow or just a light shadow. We also change to the blur. So this is the options you could just sit and, and play with and uh, figure it out for yourself. Uh, how will you want your pictures to look? Next, we have this snap edit. So if we click on here, here we have some different options. We can go uh, black and white photo. We go kind of an old timey look, old Western photo. We could put an overlay and then with this overlay, you can kind of change contrast or kind of mess with this if you want, completely up to you. Um, you can move the levels a little bit. So if it's a photo that's a little dark, you kind of move that level back a little bit, kind of lighten that image up a little bit. And let's go back to the original. So again, you could come back and maybe lighten that photo up just a little bit. And that way you kind of see what's happening uh, more in the background as well. Next, we have a mask right here. And we have some uh, different options. We have transparent, and then we have black and white. We can move our brush size, black and white does just that. You can actually sit here and make sections of the, the image black and white. Um, the other one is transparent. So if you want to make this part transparent. All right, as soon as we do that, we're going to hit save. And there we go. We now have a bit of a transparency in that photo. And it does save it uh, down here as an extra photo. Next, we're going to talk about shapes and how you can use them. So we got a shape here. We got an image block right here. So we're going to lay this image block and we're going to put one right about there. We're going to click on this image block and we're going to put what looks like a little bit of a border around it. Then from here, we can select a color. So we can select that, or we can go here, we can select this. We can also come back and we can still put a border around it, change the color of the border right here. We come back to an image. And then we can kind of do something like that. So you can put a two-toned look onto your images if you want. And you can also come over here and put text. So we can bump up the style right here. And again, we can change that to centered in the middle. We can change the text style. Change the size of the text. And we can even change the coloring of the text. And if we click on here, then we click on the shape stroke. We can actually add a stroke around it. We can add an outline of the text right here.
And also, if you need to, uh, a lot of people ask this question too, uh, with cropping, you can uh, click on the image and hit the crop button right here, and it brings up the image in the background. So if you need to move this picture over, you can. If you need to blow it uh, up here or make it larger, you can also do that by clicking off of it, and then you get uh, the image right there, or you can move it over right here click off of it, and there you go. Um, one thing that we do, um, one thing I do want to warn you about, if you try to do like a background like this, um, and then try to put like images on top of it and then try to uh, highlight these images you're also going to bring in the background too so this is why we always encourage you to uh, place a background or whatever color background you want this will just help uh, eliminate less things that you can try to grab when you're trying to grab multiple images or multiple items on the page. All right, and at this time, if there are any questions, uh, we can go ahead and open it up to any questions. You can either type it in chat or you can ask it. <laughs> All right. Then I want to take this time to thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, these demonstrations of the functions related to the creation activity pages uh, may help you when it comes time to build your yearbook. Using the templates already in the program and building your own templates should it help save time and give a book uh, continuity. Feel free to join us uh, next time uh, later on in the year for when we talk about the final steps of the build of your yearbook. And have a great day.